excited that you're all here today. Uh, it's very rare that we get an opportunity to share so many uh, stories of people that have worked with us and worked with unconscious measurement in general. And I think it'll be really valuable to everyone to hear how uh, these new types of measures are being integrated uh, by companies and, and put into practice. Uh, we're going to get to the panel in just a second. We're literally going to just take three minutes for anybody not familiar uh, with some of the things that we're doing to talk about uh, what it is that Interscope's measuring. And then we'll transition over and see how people have, have wound up uh, using some of these measurements. So I'm going to start with uh, just a little story. Uh, this here is, uh, is my son. And, uh, and I put him on getting distracted now. Uh, certainly an emotional response is being created. And if I showed you uh, some of my signals, uh, you'd see some of it. But, but really why I want to have this up here is just getting you to think about uh, a small child. You're driving a car, and uh, you see a small child on the road and you know, run right in front of where you're driving. So what do you do? You, you hit the brake. You turn your wheel. Uh, you essentially avoid hitting this person that, that ran out out of the middle of nowhere. It takes about 100, 150 milliseconds for, from the time at which you notice that that person is actually there in front of you and for it to get processed by your visual system and for you to start taking a behavioral change. 150 milliseconds. It takes another <coughs> 300 milliseconds until that information is sent to your cognitive brain and you're actually aware of what just happened. So what happens? You actually take a behavior and then you realize you took that behavior. Um, and then later on during the day, you might be talking to your spouse and say, oh my god, the craziest thing happened. This kid ran in front of the road. I did everything I could to, to not hit them. I turned the wheel. I did this. I did that. And you're talking about the actions that you think you took cognitively when, in fact, what happened is you took action and then you justified that action and you realized that action that you took. Um, and it, it, it's an interesting story to think about for a second because there's, there's a lot of information out there about emotion and, and, and how important it is in decision making. And, and we hear things like 95% of the decisions we make on a daily basis happen below conscious awareness. When we talk about a story like this, we realize that it's actually 100% uh, that, that start below conscious awareness. Only a small percentage actually reach our conscious awareness. So we're, we're taking behavioral action for, for small things, things we're not aware of, maybe picking up a can of soup in the store. And that just happens without our thought. But then even the things that we have to think about, the behavior starts long before we're actually doing that thinking. And that's where uh, Interscope comes in and <coughs> where we're able to help measure and understand uh, uh, really how people are, are making decisions and, and thinking about not just that unconscious element. That's an element that we bring that, that enhances and gives additional information, but how we can put all the whole path of that information into, into context and give people information. So how does it start? Uh, how do we process information? If uh, we're seeing a commercial, and uh, that's a disturbing image after, uh, after my son there, but uh, uh, you, what happens first is we see this commercial media website uh, product concept, and first we start processing sensorily what's going on. We hear it, we see it, and, uh, and essentially uh, where does it draw the eye? Where does it make us look? That doesn't tell us that much that's different about how people are responding to it, what's, what's emotionally connecting one or another person, but it tells us how that creative is working. We can use the eye tracking to understand are we getting people to look where they should be looking. From there, the information travels to something called our limbic system. It's the emotional centers of our brain. It's where, it's where you turn that wheel. Um, and what happens is if we want to understand the impetus of that behavior, what's getting you to take action in real time as you're seeing it, um, there's really only two ways to directly measure that. One is with an MRI machine. So if you want to put people you know, in, the, in the scanner, uh, it's expensive. It's not necessarily um, you know, having people in, in the real world, but you can definitely get at that area. And the other, the other way to do it is through physiology. As you get excited, as you get interested, as you get engaged with things, uh, your emotional centers change. And they actually are telling you to, to, to make behaviors, to take commands, to take action as you're feeling this. So it's that turning the wheel. It's also picking up that soup can. It's all of those things that are happening without us really thinking about it. These decisions are, are constantly being made by this emotional center. And we can pick it up if we look at your body. And these decisions are actually embodied. And, and this area of the brain is telling you to do something, to take a behavior. And that's where this unconscious measurement comes in. From there, the signal goes to your cognitive brain, your forebrain. And that's where you, you realize that you turn that wheel. And certainly, it's an important area. We understand much more about people by asking them questions. And, and we bring it all together. We try and look at you know, that, that first uh, element, the eye tracking, what you're seeing, what's going on, how you're emotionally responding to the action that you want to take, and then how you think about it, that, how you put that in the context of who you are and how you make decisions. 
Um, how do we look at that specific area, though, that emotional center? So we look at people's physiology, and there's a number of different signals. Afterwards, I'm, I'm happy to show you. I'm monitoring myself right now. I can walk through what's going on with me. And if anybody wants to try it out, we can uh, give you one as well. Um, there's a few signals here. There's heart rate um, that uh, essentially gives us a, some indication of like a fight or flight type response. Skin conductance, sweat level. Uh, you have microscopic changes to the moisture in various parts of your body, and we can measure, are, are you excited at this moment? Uh, respiration, are you, are you laughing? Are you sighing? Are you holding your breath in a tense moment? And movement, as you're watching a commercial, looking at a concept, surfing a website, are you leaning into your content, or are you pushing yourself away from it? And then we can use uh, eye tracking to understand what element on the screen is really focusing all of these signals, what's driving it, and then we actually compress these signals across each individual and across the audience to know much more than just is something a really strong response. Instead, we can actually understand is this something that's bringing you in, engaging you, getting you to respond to it, or is this something that's maybe aversive, pushing you away? Might still be a strong response, but we can see the difference between the two. Are you engaging or are you avoiding or ignoring it? Um, and we can use this measure to predict behavior, to understand people's actions, to, to put it together with the other signals. And it's these emotions that uh, efficiently tell us the bits of information to engage and uh, which ones ignore, which ones to ignore. Um, they directly affect attention. They enhance memory and learning. And our emotions, um, uh, only the, the, uh, the messages that can change emotion can change our behavior and change our perceptions. So it's with that we're going to talk to some people that have used our technology to understand uh, what are moving people's emotions. And uh, with that, I'm going to pass it over to Dr. Marcy.